If you have not enjoyed your single life, you are not qualified to get married. Every successful believer that will do anything for God is the believer that works in covenant. Without turning back, ah, can we say relationship? Relationship. 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 And marriage. And marriage. The, you see, there should be a suitable atmosphere for marriage or relationship for marriage to thrive. And because this is a very heavy lesson, I've come with somebody.
chapter 3, verse 7. It is a relationship that is built by grace. It is my prayer that, let me read First Peter, yeah, 1, 2, 3, we can read. First Peter 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, together. Husbands, in the same way, be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as who has with you all the grace has given your life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So and that's why they read because you are heirs of grace. So they are pity. Any marriage without the grace of God have people who are committed for frustration. Even though you may be educated, you may be having a hundred support from your parents, but when the two of you misses grace, you will be enemies. And that's why the Bible says it is a grace ministry. You are heirs of grace. Before I married my wife Monica, she was operating with Monica Grace. Before I married, I was a single guy operating with Evans Grace. Gold individual graces. I could pray any holy. I could do anything in the boundaries of individual grace. But now, when we were joined and we ended a foul, and we were bound to be one. And we were declared on the altar of the Lord for Polytechnic. And now I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Evan Stumo. That was when the individual grace were promoted to compound grace. <laughs>
already you are killing yourself and you are killing your future and you are killing your marriage. Paul said I have done a lot but not me in this grace. Meaning it was a hundred percent God in man. Amen. Amen. In marriage we partner with God through grace. <laughs> To an extent, if you want to fast and pray, your partner must be aware. The whole level, <laughs> in fact, the marriage can close a level for somebody. If you miss to operate with grace in marriage, you will always be operating on a close level. There are very few people that enjoy the visions of God in marriage. Okay, number three. <laughs> Okay, number three, and then I will, I will, I will, I will, I will invite uh, my friend up. Marriage is the highest calling of raising generations for God. It is the highest calling. Marriage is not for everybody. <laughs> not all people can enter to the highest level of marriage where you raise generations for God. Because let me say this in this way. Kitanda in our select and total. Even the Bible says, Hadam and Eve select. Now to a katoke apa. Yes, your marriage. Na kama ni marriage, ni level. Na kini kuna the highest level of marriage. When marriage is a relationship of raising generations for God. Among God's interest in marriage, one is children. And not another, or not children of the numbers. That's why married bed should be kept in people because God is seeking for people whom He can partner to birth generations for it. Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 2, 15 and 16. We will read another verse. It says again, Rom takatifu wako na wewe hapo, takumalizia. Yeah. Malachi chapter 2, verses 15. One, two, three, we can read together. As long as one God made you, you belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Wow! Wow! You see, <laughs> well, there is the agenda of God in every marriage. But many, many marriages are disappointed and frustrated the mandate of God. When you do the Kulala and the Kulala, he wants to get a young man to find a guy Okay. <laughs> okay, let's read. What does the one God see? What? Godly offspring. So and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Uh huh, verse 16. Uh huh, and 3. The man who hates and divorces. Why? Says the Lord, the God of Israel, that's violence to the one he should protect. Says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. Do you know there are people who do what we call an extended unfaithfulness? Because they began before. <laughs> So it is just an extension. What they call marriage is extension of defilement and faithfulness. <laughs> One of the things that God has given you, hallelujah, Amen. that you be your power in negotiation force in raising a gener in raising generation for God is what? Your purity. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 4. And I will invite now my
my brother, for the next just a few minutes again. Few minutes again. Ha! My God. One, two, three. Marriage should be on a Bible. Is it some? So what does it mean? Marriage is an institution of honor. Marriage is a government of honor. If you don't know to honor your body, it begins by honoring your body. Nusumatitism is not honor. Okay. <laughs> should be honored by honor. What does it mean? It is an institution. It is a parastato. It is a government. It is a system of honor. Amen. Do you know the last person who the, the last person to kiss somebody before you kiss somebody, there is no boy or no man who is permitted to kiss somebody's daughter before Babayaki are kissed the Gwambia and the left of them. Can I prove to you biblically? have a biological father, you cannot be fathered. 
praise the living God. No. You must put yourself under strict instructions to walk and live a guided life. Praise the living God. You don't live like a cock. <laughs> Praise the living God. My name is Jackson Maloba. I'm blessed to be married to one wife who is a woman. <laughs> We've been married for 10 years now. We have three children. Our first born is in grade three, second one is in PP1, and the third one is still enjoying our love at home. Praise the living God. She is in, in the home garden. Now, our pastor has spoken about very salient things, praise the living God. Okay, to clear the doubt, I am a graduate of Makerere University and I have a master's in theology also. And I want to thank God for the grace. So I am learned, praise the living God. <laughs> praise the Lord. So count yourself privileged because you are talking to someone who is learned. Because you know why I boast about that is because the Bible says he has given me the tongue of the learned. To know what to say. Praise the living God. Being learned is not about having a degree. It's about being able to know what to say. Many people are learned but they don't know what to say. So I want to begin from the foundation. The strength of every building is in its foundation. The faulty the foundation, the weaker the building. The stronger the foundation, the stronger the building. That's why in every project, I believe here we have architects, isn't it? Or technical people, engineers and all that. Every building, the biggest investment is always on them. Praise the living God. Amen. Say foundation. foundation. Yes. So you must be able to invest in your foundation. And the foundation of marriage is courtship. Praise the living God. The quality the courtship, the quality the marriage. There is something called dating. Many of us our destinies have ended in dating. But I want to tell you what dating is. Dating is a process of finding a suitable life partner. That's all that is to dating. It's, the Bible says in Proverbs, Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth what? That's dating. The process of dating is for finding. But the end of dating, your finding should end in courtship. So if you are not intending to date someone, don't, to call someone, don't date them. Enjoy singlehood because singlehood is not a jail. In fact, I want to tell you this. If you are not in 
enjoyed your single life, you're not qualified to get married. Because every 
You, you cannot successfully work within boundaries without a covenant. Praise the living God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I know I'm speaking strange things. But allow me to speak. Now let me give you the joy of everything. I only did three things. Stand. And actually two. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I entered campus, I had only two missions. To study and to serve the Lord. If you don't find me in fellowship, I'm in class or in a discussion. If I'm not in any of those two, I'm in a prayer room or doing a manual. Those were my two. I had eyes for my covenant. It doesn't mean that there were no beautiful ladies. There were so many beautiful brown, yellow, purple. <laughs> Figures, figure eight, figure seven, figure ten, <laughs> figure thirteen, fourteen. All of them were there. Variety was presented to me every day by the devil. <laughs> but I kept the covenant. It doesn't mean I did not have temptations, attractions. They were there. In fact, killer attractions. But I did not allow my elections to determine my direction. <laughs> Praise the living God. Hear me, brother. It's a blessing to have an election. In fact, if you don't have, it, was, it, it you are not on okay. You are not normal. <laughs> So what is courtship? It's a period. Courtship is not an event. It's a what? It's a period of an established, number one, agreed relationship between two people of the opposite sex. Emphasis, opposite. <laughs> intended to lead to marriage. You see, Everything that I've spoken about has a direction. It has an ending. Praise the living God. Dating leads to courtship. Courtship, the intention of courtship is what? Marriage. Praise the living God. So, here be ladies, anyone that wants to date you without the intention of courtship, tell them you are not a violent. One being tater, one being a but I If you wish to leave a voice message, but if you let them leave your voice so that you can read it and then listen to the voice message and determine. So dating comes before courtship, and dating should lead to courtship. Dating is not a trial and error venture. But I swear. Ah, I'm on a joy for why? I just feel like a coffee kilo go niki yakali yakama anatoshia. Love na kati na usi na. That's a joke. It's a game. All this
these things are supposed to be intentional. What does You should be committed to the intent of courtship, uh, of dating, and that is finding a spouse. And you should be committed to the intent of courtship, and that is finding, no, that is marriage. When I say family. In courtship, family members, relations, your spiritual authorities are in the norm. When I say family. That means by the time you enter courtship, you have established that this is the person I want to be with. One has a feeling. So you make a proposal, and then you agree. When you make a proposal, you make it open and live to the friends that matter to you, to your parents, and to your spiritual authorities. One has a feeling. When I, let me tell you what happened to me. I told you my story. In this life, if he, if he ever not, if he never speaks to me again, he spoke to me one thing, my wife. Man has feel. That's why I say I never fasted for, I kept my part of the covenant. So one day, a few days before I left campus, the Lord said to me, wait for me in the closet for three days. I went to the closet, I prayed. He was giving me things to pray for. Pray for this, pray for that, pray for this. On the third day of the waiting on the Lord, he told me, I called you here to give you your wife. Praise the living God. So he told me in the next six months, prepare for a marriage relationship. Six months. Six months. <laughs> Praise the living God. And so I took the opportunity to ask him who is the, who is she? And he called her by name Rachel Cocky. <laughs> now let me give you the miracle here. I knew only one name of that lady because she was in the CU with me. But I was Far ahead, I was leaving campus while she was just in second year. I knew only one name. Her name, I knew Rachel. I didn't know her second name. But when the Lord spoke to me in the closet, He spoke to me her two names. So I called her to ask her her second name, and she said the same name that the Lord spoke in the closet. Praise the living God. <laughs> And we have been living for the last how many years? Ten. Ten. I've never slept. We've never argued. Praise the Lord. Stress free. I want to tell you this there is stress free marriage. But it begins when you are single.
the book of uh, Exodus 23-25 that thou shalt serve the Lord and he will bless your bread and water and there shall be no barrenness in your camp. That means if there will be no barrenness there can, you cannot talk about barrenness if you are not married. <laughs> it means he has given you what it takes to be there. So serve the Lord my friend. Is a 
esposo, espouse, or betrothal, isn't it? That is how the, the strongest terms. Joseph was betrothed to Mary, Luke chapter 1, verse 27, going down. And he kept his covenant. In fact, you see, when he discovered that Mary is pregnant, he could not even take it until the Holy Ghost came to him. The, the Lord came to him. That's why I want you to expand your singlehood in prayer and in knowing who God is to you. Because a person that does, if you cannot handle yourself, how can you handle the second person who was raised from a different background? Praise the living God. We will you jail, you will never have to move to how will you understand another person? If you yourself cannot understand yourself, you will not be in front of you. 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 You will not be And the first step of understanding yourself is having a solid relationship with God. Make God your first commitment. Because when your relationship with God is intact, He will not allow certain things in your life. He will give you signals. He will tell you, don't go there, don't go there. You walk like a guy there. We have been on the prayer mountain and someone was talking about our walk with God is like being yoke. He's a yoke with him. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you are not free. You are free from demonic forces, but you're not free from the governance of God. We are yoked, praise the living God. By a youth, bull walks guided. When I see him, he won't even to leave you. To be fungiwa nila pamoja na Yesu. Kama tu na tembea kama watu walioni wanaongozwa. When I see him, my time is fast, man. is a necessary part of every successful marriage. It is part of the foundation laying period of a marriage. So don't allow anyone court you if they are not, they don't have a vision of marriage. When I quote for four years, I come on a funny degree. Now I will graduate. Courtship is not coffee shop. You may put your car, you may put your cocoa, you may put ice cream. Code F. This is what? 
focus. Courtship number one should focus on marriage. Number two, your courtship should enhance your relationship with God, not replace it. What does it feel? Kuna watu wakigia kwa courtship wana sahawa wa meokoka. Kila siku una muka tuni picha ya mafia data unangalia. Baka hata kufu ya maombi inaisha. What does it feel? So you should focus. Deal with someone who is seeking Christ. During courtship, you find people that are walking the same direction with you. People that believe in what you believe. What does it feel? Jana nikuwa na, na, we were trying to help a girl with Apostle Fiziba. Ati anasema. Ati... I have this boyfriend who is a Muslim that is better, who is richer than this brother who is born again. <laughs> Can you be that kind of nonsense? What does it feel? But when you Islam, you are better than who you do go and you go come. Come with us, where you move on a different amount of pesa. Is it money? Are you marrying for what he are you entering the relationship for what he has? When does he feel? That's the wrong focus. When my wife married me, some of you would have run away. Some of you pastor knows me. Fact the first suit I ever put on. Someone bought for me on the prayer mountain. <laughs> the first suit. Full, I'm talking about full suit, yeah? This is in Guinea. The first blazer I ever put on, I, 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 but I treasured it. Now, no one even asked me. My dress is my choice. <laughs> That's the first coat I ever put on. When she married me, I was broke. Not as a church mouse, because the church is not broke nowadays. But I had nothing. She would have run away. But we built ourselves. Coat number two is you. Called you, it's called understanding. Don't just drink coffee, understand who your partner is. Dissect them, find out their beliefs. How they handle conflicts. Praise the living God. Amen. Communicate, talk about everything and anything. Talk about sex, talk about the future. Talk about your beliefs, talk about your parents. Talk about children. Talk about death. Talk about life. Anything and everything. Jebuka. I do a come and do the She did a worship the squeezy pastor. I do. I love you. At una una jivanya ata uwezi kunywa chai. Una badala kumabia dada. Sina pesa. To get up a restaurant, I can only afford one plate of food, so I can buy the food we share. I can't see at all. to me because.
is called compromise. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Don't compromise your Christian standards just to end your relationship. Don't play down your faith for just wanting to be accepted. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was finishing. Dress appropriately. What you to say about it? Funika kifua. Let me tell you this. There's no man that wants his wife to show her her breasts. All over. It's in dignity. Dress well, you're still beautiful, even if you don't show them. Your shape does not disappear if you don't show it. Keep yourself. Fashion does not mean walking naked. Sit in public places for security. Limit your touchings. Remember that your body is flesh and blood. <coughs> Give your hands control. Avoid kissing. You may now kiss your bride. What is new that you experience? <laughs> Guard each other's purity. The strongest partner of your life is the one that can keep you reminded that you belong to God, you serve a pure God. And that purity is the standard of God. What does it feel? Yes. Listen to me. There are still virgins there. How do I know? My wife was. Praise the Lord. So virgins are still there. The greatest thing that you can gather, you can guard and give to your spouse is your purity. If you have been involved in any of these things, there is always a second chance with God. Keep yourself pure. Praise the living God. Amen. That's the standard. Don't compromise. Remember, courtship is not marriage. So, if you discover that your spouse or your partner is not meet for it, leave them. One has a view. His courtship is not what? If you discover things that do not flow with where you are going, leave it. Release them for their God-given spouse. Don't die for it. I will kill myself. Kill yourself. Who will marry you? He will marry another person. Praise the living God. Don't be in a rush. Where is it keep jogging? I keep jogging and rush. And I keep down. If you don't have peace, don't go ahead. If you have any doubts, don't go ahead. Lastly, adhere to the counsel of elders. That's why you need to have spiritual people in your life. Friends and people that speak things that you listen to. And finally, I want to tell you this. One very important thing. If your partner does not have someone they submit to, that person is a dangerous person to marry. Ask them who is your pastor. And go to your pastor and find out whether they submit to your pastor, to their pastor or they are just there. Because some people come to church to just find a girl who is in choir. Every man wants to marry a spiritual
spiritual man, even if they are wicked. Every guy wants to marry a spiritual brother, even if they are not spiritual. Praise the living God. So subject yourself to authority. One has to Let me tell you something today. To Kikosana na Bibiangu, and Yabia Tapigia Pastor Evans, too. See me. In a bigger proportion of the UCA, they must. What a tool to sort. To be shinned up, to be gazed as you are. What has it been? That's important for you. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> So, Master, you are still singing the Lift your voice.